Fleming Vision 2000 Episode 4 Whistle Slime Welcome to beautiful Waikiki Beach to Desperate Persuasions, the program where strangers become intimate friends, or maybe more. As always, I'm your host, Tab Chuckley. Tonight, we have three strapping young gentlemen as contestants on our show, who I'd like to introduce to you right now. Contestant number one has come all the way from London, England, where he is a self-made heir and job creator. Let's hear it for Lord Paddington. Thank you. London, England, huh? That's a beautiful city you come from, Lord Paddington. Yes, that is correct. Yes. Uh, have you ever been? Me? No, not, not personally. I was born in this country, and I don't plan on leaving. Call me old-fashioned, but America's pretty cool. Okay. Contestant number two is a motivational speaker from Hoboken, New Jersey. Let's give a warm, desperate persuasions welcome to Dandiford Lion. Tell us, Dandiford. Dandy. My friends call me Dandy. Contestant number three is a very successful slaughterhouse foreman from Eel Surprise Incorporated of Tehran. Unfortunately, he has no name. All the same, let's hear it for contestant number three. <laughs> very well. Each of these contestants are going to be vying for the hand of one very eligible bachelorette. If chosen, one of these contestants will accompany her on a very romantic getaway for two. Sounds pretty cool, doesn't it? Let's hear a little bit more about this bachelorette. I guess I'm a normal kind of girl. I like flowers, getting pedicures. I don't trust foreigners. Mostly, I guess I'm looking for a knight in shining armor to whisk me off my feet. But my standards are very high. If you're not independently wealthy, I'm not interested. Sorry, that's just how it is. Oh, and I really like broccoli. I really like broccoli. I really love broccoli. I really love broccoli. I really love broccoli. I really love broccoli. People. Everywhere you turn these days, it seems like you're seeing them, doesn't it? On the beach, at the post office, at the flower shop, just about anywhere and everywhere there are people. Different sizes, different shapes, Different genders, different colors, but they're all people, just like you and me, with different skills and weaknesses, each one with a different story to tell, 
each one a new friend to make, if you try. Some might already know you, but really, most are complete strangers. Maybe today will be the day that you decide to give one of them a try and say, hello, out of the blue as they pass you on the street. People. Desperate Persuasions. As we were discussing before those messages from our sponsors, Sierra here is going to ask some very personal questions of our contestants. Whoever she picks will get to go with her on a very sensual tryst for two to a far off location. Sierra? Thank you, Tad. Uh, Tab. Whatever. Contestant number one. I'm a modern woman with modern needs, and I'm not looking to play any games. If I choose you, what sort of lifestyle can you offer a girl like me? Dear Sierra, let me waylay those concerns for you, because I am no papa. I'm a man of many means, and if you were to give me just one evening with you, just one passionate evening, I would take you with me on my jet and to the champs Elysees, where we would stare into each other's eyes all evening long. And then after that, perhaps the next day, I would take you to Milan or wherever else you would like to go. Iraq, if you will, maybe North Korea. And then at the end, we would stop at, you know, the canals of Amsterdam through plumes of smoke, holding hands. Boring. Next. Contestant two. What sort of material possessions can you promise a girl like me? Frankly, nothing. I'm no misogynist, but I refuse to waste my hard-earned money on a woman. I suppose if you were to choose me, I would put you to work around the house. My latrine needs a polishing. Or maybe you could dust my speculum collection. But for a man like me, the road to my heart goes through my stomach. So I'm going to expect you to make yourself handy in the kitchen. And we'll see where it goes from there. But no funny business. I'm not interested in fornicating. Oh, I see. And contestant three, do you have what it takes to please a refined lady like myself? Ooh, the strong and silent type. Mommy likes. Sierra, I was speaking with the producers, and they told me that they met you backstage, and in a moment of candor, you told them about, well, some of your physical needs. Uh, they said that you had been going on dates with men, and, well, they hadn't fulfilled you in that special way. Is this true? It's true, Tab. I've just seemed to attract just boys when I'm looking for a man. All these boys, they just want to wham bam and see you later, mama. I don't want that. I am a defined lady who has needs, who needs her, um, um, what do you call it? The, um... Attention paid to your erogenous zones. Yes, that's it. Well, what about it, guys? Do you have what it takes to help a woman out physically in that special area down there? Let me just stop you right there and let you know uh, how I got into this business. Was uh, at the tender age of nine, I uh, wrote, I'm sorry, I translated the Kama Sutra into Welsh. And I must say that it is the most eloquent and stated translation from the uh, original Sanskrit, of course. 
and I must say it left an indelible mark on the rest of my adulthood. It was no uh, just a linguistic feat. I learned that love and the act of lovemaking wasn't just about genitals. It was all about the mind, the soul, the entire body. So from the intricacies of just say foreplay to the assault of coitus, I can possibly fulfill your desires, Miss Sierra. That's all sissy stuff. What about you, Dandy? I do not approve of this kind of talk. Had I known that you were looking for this, well, this sort of foul mouth smack, I would not have accepted your invitation onto this program. You know, I came on here just looking for a person to help out with work on the farm, and pressing my shirts, and tidying up around the house, and fixing my meals, and fetching my slippers. Not this filth! It's for procreation, not recreation! Okay, well, contestant number three, do you have what it takes, physically? Oh, it's like he's undressing me with his eyes. I think we all know what that means. We've entered the lightning round. Sierra, ladies' choice. How about that English guy? Ah, uh, that's Welsh. Take my coffee like I take my women, covered in bees.
I deserve this. My dad was rich. My grandfather was rich. My grandfather's dad was rich. My grandfather's grandfather was rich. His grandfather was rich. And his dad was rich. And his dad. Salutations, fellow women folk, don't you wish you had a food-based product targeted to your minority status but gave you those special women nutrients that we need? Girl Glop, now in pink. Salutations. Have you ever had one of those days where you ran out of tampons and you're in the middle of a hot, exciting date with a guy who could pay all your bills? Girl Glob. Practical for everything. Are you going to have that? Susie knew that it had to be done. Try as she might to put it off. The time came and it had to be done. Friends offered advice, but their silly words offered no real help. And they couldn't change the fact that it had to be done. She bargained with the faces in the clouds, but they could not budge. It had to be done. Susie realized this. It couldn't be avoided any longer. As a little girl, she never pictured that this sort of thing would be what her grown-up life would consist of. She never anticipated that this would be her task as an adult, no longer guided by her mother and father's strict discipline. She was on her own, and it had to be done. Maybe she'd meet a stranger on the road. Someone who wouldn't be missed. Yes, someone like that. And maybe that unfortunate person could pay the ultimate sacrifice. What real damage would that do? Susie asked herself, who would even notice? People like that, Susie said, were not so much to get worried about. Hardly people, really. She hoped that she'd find someone along the road. But nobody ever showed up. And it had to be done. So, coming to the village square, 
she did it. And later, in her senile years, she would still look back on the act. It pleased her not. Things so far have been pretty cool, haven't they? I guess. You've gotten to pick the brains of three very eligible bachelors, find out their wants, their desires. But this is not an ice cream social. We're here to pick a winner. That's got to be a lot of pressure for a dainty young woman like yourself. I guess. This is the moment of truth. Who will it be? Which two will go home sobbing? And which one will accompany you on a very romantic getaway for two? All expenses paid, three day, 21 night trip to beautiful Indianapolis, Indiana. <laughs> or the enigmatic contestant number three. Well, Tab, they all have their different strengths, except that English man. That's Welsh, madam. Sierra, we need your answer. Who is it gonna be? I choose, I will choose um, my Choice is, um... Who is going to be your desperate persuasion? I choose, I will choose, um... I choose, I choose... Who is it going to be, Sierra? I choose my sister, Uganda Leon. <laughs> That's not natural. Filth. I never want us ever be apart ever again. I'm sure that dear Uncle Mom up in heaven is looking down on us with a tear of joy in her eyes. 